Jesus was te teaching in a synagogue on the day of the Sabbath, and a woman was there who for 18 years had been crippled by a spirit. She was bent over, completely incapable of standing erect. When Jesus saw her, he called to her and said, Woman, you are set free of your infirmities. He laid his hands on her, and she at once stood up straight and glorified God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant that Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, said to the crowd in reply, There are six days when work should be done. Come on those days to be cured, not on the Sabbath day. The Lord said to him in reply, Hypocrites! Does not each one of you, on the Sabbath, untie his ox or his ass from the manger and lead it out for watering? This daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for eighteen years now, ought she not to have been set free on the Sabbath day from this bondage? When he said this, all his adversaries were humiliated, and the whole crowd rejoiced at the splendid deeds done by him. The Gospel of the Lord. This woman of 18 years had been crippled by a spirit. And so this is a place in the gospel where we can see that there is such thing as a demonic presence, an evil presence, the devil. She was completely incapable of standing erect. St. Augustine says that she was a symbol of people who have their hearts set on the things of the world. And eventually, these souls lose the capacity to look up to heaven. They are only able to see the ground and their feet. They are unable to look to heaven to see the Lord who made heaven and earth, the Lord God and all his mercy. Satan has bound this woman for 18 years. There's an interesting take at this. I met someone who had a type of condition like this. And for years, bothered by a serious arthritis condition. And what happened was, in talking with me, I came to understand that this person needed to forgive someone. They couldn't look above to reconciliation. They could only see below to their anger that was haunting them. And so after encouraging the person to go to confession, they came back and revealed to me that a few hours after their confession, they were able to stand straight and have no pain. What happened there was that unforgiveness became an obsession that was fanned by the evil one. And she let it go. And so did her physical malady leave. There's an interesting quote from the Psalms. 
For failing to confess my sin, my bones wasted away. Psalm 32. This is a, a great testimony of unforgiveness and it, its impact on us. That's one of those ways where, like St. Augustine says, we look down instead of up to the mercy and the glory of God. We also have here in the scriptures in our first reading, St. Paul mentions people who are consumed by the flesh and become obsessive and eventually start treating things they see, their tablets, their phones, they become idols where they're fixated. And oftentimes in these media things, we are led into sin and we get attached to them and they soon obsess us to the point where we can't do anything else but that. This is also a type of being bent over and staring at the ground instead of looking up to heaven. Jesus calls this woman. It, this is interesting. He singles her out. She doesn't come to him. He singles her out and he calls her to himself. Jesus signals to her that he has this initiative for us, for her, and he has a desire for her in the same way that Jesus has a desire for all of us to leave some of these obsessions behind. Jesus singles us out through our felt need for confession that's nagging us in our conscience, not necessarily nagging us, I would say, inspiring us. And after a good confession, we can be set free and we can see the face of the Lord, especially in the Holy Eucharist. St. Paul is very direct here. Because of this, no immoral or impure or greedy person that is an idolater has any entrance into the kingdom of Christ and of God. St. Paul isn't trying to frighten us or threatening us. He's simply revealing a reality that we need to know about and we need to avoid. Jesus then calls us to respond to his call, reconcile these issues that might be burdening us or obsessing us, especially in the sacrament of reconciliation, so we can be set free and let our eyes gaze upon the Lord who made heaven and earth. Regina, Let's see.